Okay. Um, yeah. So we are presenting well, not yet another management solution, but uh, process, but something a bit quite different. Um, we are quite and we are building a uh, full management thing for deploying a set cluster and managing it from plugging in the server and until deploying everything. And I will mostly go to a live demo here. And yeah, so first about us, we are a new startup, or well, relatively new. It's now almost exactly one year ago that we founded the company uh, from the Munich Germany. And we had the first version that we like showed to people at the set day in March last year. It was like almost exactly one year ago. It was in San Jose, where we first presented some version and then Sometime last year, we had our first customer, like as a pilot customer in April, and then we had the first real version that we were actively selling and giving to people in uh, late August. And since then, we have three big releases. The last one just like just like last week, and you will see all our newest, latest, fanciest features. And our goal is really to make that as easy to use as possible and as easy to manage and monitor and alert and stuff and so on. And one thing that, that we want to want to aim at if if people are coming from having no idea about SEP or whatever, they want to buy storage. And like if they buy storage, they think, okay, I'm going to buy a box, I put it in my bag, I turn it on, I maybe click two buttons in some fancy UI, and then I have my storage. Well, as we have heard here with set that doesn't quite work like that because you install an operating system. You edit some YAML files for your Ansible or DeepSea or whatever, and then you deploy stuff, and it's annoying, you need to change something. You edit some configuration files by hand again. We believe this should all be handled by the by some dashboard. So I will just go right into the demo, and I'll show a few features, and afterwards I will talk about some implementation details and about how to deploy a new cluster. So, um, Let's jump into the first cluster. This is a demo cluster that we have that has like we bought some cheap hard hardware of eBay, which was kind of nice, it was relatively cheap. It's 11 servers with 90 disks in them. And it's really old hardware, which is also kind of nice because we need to test failures and so on. And if you buy 90 disks that are 10 years old, um, some of them will fail, some of them did fail. So it was nice to, to test that. And also the servers are not the fastest, but also not the slowest. So it's just all hardware of eBay is a great test system if you want to test failures. Um, okay, our dashboard. This is, of course, like everything in Hardware Day. It's fully US API, and you can call it the API yourself and get the same data, um, just as you would expect. And as you see, it's, it's quite nice from the design point of view. You always take care that it not only shows the relevant information, but it shows them in a nice way, and that it also really puts an emphasis, I can switch to another cluster where we have like some issues, there's like one demo cluster that's all the yeah, uh, post these out, we quickly see that there's something wrong, we see that there's a warning, I can go see the details of what's wrong, I get an overview of my placement groups, which are all in some warning state, and for example, if I want to know more about that, I could click on it, and it takes me to a view of the placement groups in here, and I can see they are undersized of all the of us. But let's go back to the not failure case. The cluster working like this, okay? It's like the basic overview of the cluster, and all this data is available via our API, and of course we have integrations with Grafana and so on. You can just be of our Grafana dashboards and this is the exact same data source, and you can just, just import it. And they're like dashboards as you would expect. And so, the same statistics are also available in our UI, and it's just the same data as you just saw in your funnel, you get a nice overview of the servers you have, their current utilization, you can like drill down into a server and say, okay, this server is a little bit too much, I will not show you the details of that server, and then it goes to that server view. Um, and of course everything, like we didn't just put in the some Grafana dashboard and one thing, but we re implemented the whole thing here. Um, with uh, some wrapper around us that allows us to translate some queries and do some fancy stuff. And of course, all everything like Swift and so on works as you would expect. Um, yeah, so these are the main statistics and server statistics. Now, we of course, you can see the servers you have, the hardware you have, all the information you would expect. 
and can like show additional information like the CPU we have in there or the mainboard and serial numbers. And one nice thing is this since this is all exposed by an API, you can really nice to integrate it with some inventory management system or whatever because you get the MAC addresses, the serial numbers and so on. So if we look at a server, you can do all the things you would expect from doing with a server from hardware. Um, that includes like configuring your network class because if you want to set up it initially, your cluster, you don't want to fiddle with network configuration on 20 servers manually. Yeah, sure, you have uh, you are able to uh, manage the, the configuration, but still that is annoying. Here's just a nice interface. For example, if I had not already created the bond here, I could click on these two and click create bond that would set up the bond interface, do all the usual LSP settings you want, and then you get a nice bonded interface. You can configure VLAN text and, and everything on the servers right from the front end. Um, and don't worry, I'm not going through all these settings because I've only like half an hour time to have so many features in here, I can't click through all of them. Um, but one thing I want to show is just the, the disks view because um, you get a quick overview of the disks, an overview of what's the I.O. load going to be on the disk, what service is running in there, and if the service was down, I would see the information here that the service was down, you can keep scrub, scrub, whatever. Um, but if there's a service associated with the disk, I can just also get the log file for that service on that server. So I can see the boss was D26, I get a log file filtered for that specific server. And this log view, I can do whatever I want here. I can just type with a, let's see, okay, let's want to see the kernel log, well, not of all servers, but of that specific server. I can zoom in here, then it tells me stuff, and I can just change the time range up here, and it's just a nice log view. And one thing we always say is, we want to do everything through the front end, but the, the sad truth is sometimes you just need to go to a shell and edit something like it for the hardware. Do something on the server. It's unfortunately sometimes necessary. There are several ways to do that. One is we all manage these servers completely. That means the management node that we have has SSH access and you can just tunnel through the management node. Or there's of course management for the SSH keys that are installed and so on. Um, but if that's if you just really want to quickly look at the server, we integrated a terminal here and then you can just click here and you get a full terminal for that server right in the front end if you just want to like run something and see something. And this is by the way a real actual terminal and not some VLC stuff. That means your keyboard layout is correctly set here. You can uh, scroll back, you can copy and paste and everything just works because it's an actual terminal setting up an SSH connection in the background. So, servers and, well, as I said, we want to manage everything from the front end. That means we can manage all services that we support here. If we say, okay, we want another uh, MDS server, we can go, okay, add service here and click MDS and we got another MDS server that we deploy in the background. And if you deploy the multiple, we can just multi select, add services and whatever, for example, say, for NFS gateways and deploy them. Um, few other things here uh, that I want to show off. Um, one thing that we are doing a lot is ZFS. And we are doing a lot of ZFS and really exporting as well Samba and MFS and whatever. And one thing that you sometimes just need, you want to upload a file, download a file, like upload, download a VM image, upload an ISO to your whatever store. And we will the ZFS file explorer for this and we can just go here somewhere and go into a folder or anything and you can see files uploaded here, you can of course edit all these files and if you create a new folder it already integrates nicely with all the adding pools feature, you can add pools or whatever it's have and then it just suggests okay we have these two pools, for example in a vector code pool and we want that um, new folder on our EC pool, for example, it creates the folder, and then we can like um, upload a file here, see if uh, or a great white paper, drag it in here, and it uploads. Um, yeah, so, tools. Um, yeah, it's just what you expect from a pool, so it shows you statistics. 
uh, how much data is in there, how many objects, and what is going on in that pool right now. And you can support uh, edit everything. And you can, again, drill down into the statistics for an individual pool. You get to our statistics view. And you can, of course, just select uh, other pools here as well. And if you create a pool, we have just in the new release integrated everything. We have uh, made Booster the default before it was like a morning tag. Now it's the default. And you, of course, support the ratio coding and everything. And it's such as cross rules. One thing about cross rules is most users don't need to create cross rules manually because most users really need some reasonable default cross rules. And we create this default cross rules by default as soon as. Like, as soon as you add your first SSD, it creates a crush rule that says, OK, only place data on SSD. But if you need more for crush rules, or you go to our crush view, which is this fancy thing. Um, it's completely eligible, of course, but I just wanted to show the, the, the rules. And it's like, it's a simple dialog. Like, I want to start at the default, and then I want to choose independent regs. And I only want HTTPs, well, it just only has HTTPs, and I give it a name, and then I can create it. So, crush. Um, it was also like one of our first features, this, this uh, crush map dialog, because it's just something nice to show off, and it was like one of the first things we implemented. Um, let's say we want to add something here, because these servers we are running here, they are actually like these super micro twin servers, so there are two servers in one chassis. So we should set up some failure domains. So we could just go here and create a few buckets of type chesses, um, create them, and then we can like do a drag and drop as you would expect. And if you create a new cluster and there's a host that is not yet assigned to anything because you don't automatically assign it to this data moves like you don't want them automatically, it just shows up and it shows you a warning like, okay, there are unassigned hosts. Do you want to assign it to the default bucket now? Yes, click. And that's uh, really nice. So, and this crush map is not changed live. Anything I do here, it's just temporary, it shows up, and only when I press save, it calculates changes in the background, and it tells me, okay, I want to add these, these are the changes you did, is this okay, like add the crush buckets, and then move these things, and then move these into the default rule, I can execute, it executes these exact changes and nothing else, because we check back if someone else changed and so on, uh, just to be extra safe here as an extra step, and if someone executes this, we shouldn't execute it, and others will get track stuff like that. Um, and we also make it hard to delete data accidentally and so on, because it came up a few times. If I delete a pool, one thing we do is we, every few minutes we go through all the pools and just force set the no delete flag on all the pools, and just so you don't make it really hard to delete one. Uh, if you want to change it, you set this flag, which, like temporary, which removes the flag and temporarily sets a flag in our database to say, okay, don't reset this flag here. And once I've done this, I can go to the delete button, and then it asks me to enter the name of the tool to confirm that I really want to delete it, and no, I don't want to delete it. And just to be safe from programming bugs, they are like in the API, there are like two different fields where the thing the user enters and the, thing, the bucket that is selected by the front end sent actually two different strings in the back end and checks again if you really are sure and then, so because we are really afraid of someone using data. So just become a cat um, just trying to um, Then you can like edit keys and do the things you expect already shown in the crash map. Um, and since we support networks and so on, we can um, change change network settings here. We can set up networks of different types. Like we can just set the um, set this network to the public or internal self network, and all these changes are automatically deployed live to all the clusters. Because all the features we want to build, do don't want to only show things. We do the whole management from scratch from the server, and we don't fall back to some other tools. Okay, what else do we have? We have user management, it's kind of bare bones, but we do have the feature to create view only, view only users, and we are currently working on the other integration and so on. But at the moment, um, new customers really love that they can have like a view only user who can see the state, see the warnings, and but not delete anything really. Then, 
uh, let me mention with you, that is one thing of course you can set these OSD map flags or whatever, but the, the really cool thing we recently completely revamped is this recovery speed setter. Because like everyone had a problem that the recovery was going too fast, too slow, or whatever clients were starting from IO, and then you Google how do I reduce recovery speed, then you find out you should. Uh, set the max backfield parameter, but it turns out it's like not the best parameter to tune if you want to tune it. You know, I think to tune is like the, this fancy sleep parameter which just injects a sleep between everything. But you barely find it somewhere because it's relatively new and uh, this is just what the slider does. Just temporarily changes the settings and uh, injects the necessary arcs. Um, oh, and while we are connecting with you, there's like a hyphen shell, and if you want to type something, it's like just the usual shell and there's set command, all of them available. And Whatever you change with the shell or from any set object of code, we support it. Like if you add some weird cross rule that our fancy dialog doesn't support, it doesn't matter, we still show it, this cross rule exists, we don't go and delete anything that you added in here, or even do weird stuff. You can like add a pool outside of it and you will see, oh great, there's a new pool, let's import it in our database, and then you can like, use our database to store the description of the pool and so on. Um, then if I go here, one thing, this is, I'm just showing this because it came up a few times. Uh, this is like a development version, we are actively working on this, but um, not quite yet done. But this is our set configuration view. We can add arbitrary options here. Uh, we already have some APIs, like we are passing the set conf that we can get from the uh, admin socket of the managers and demons. So in the future, there will be autocomplete here, and it will know what values are valid and so on. But at the moment, the only thing it does is that you can add a custom option, and then it automatically goes to the managers or months and so on, and all the demons and tells them, uh, okay, this option config sets to change the option live by the running. It also updates your set config file and all your servers. Um, what else to show? Well, this is the set config file that we use by default. We tune a few settings based on our experience with the set. Um, and what do we have that I don't want to show yet? The keys can be kind of nice because we just recently just released, we run them. Um, if you create a new key, you can select like different key types, for example, a seven S key, where you can add some uh, things. This is autocomplete, by the way, um, probably hard to see because it's gray on gray, but it suggests to use the folder test five because there's a folder name like that. Um, then you can add the keys and so on, restrict them to pools. Then a few, we have a few users um, using us for S3 extensively. That's also something we are still working on. There's not yet much there. We can like manage users and buckets. And there are, of course, statistics on a per user or a bucket basis. We manage sub users. But we are currently working on adding an API file explorer there as well, so that we just have, like, we have a set of S5 and for S3. Um, of course, this view, we can change the bucket that's being displayed here. And it is like multiple, there's a summary up there, summing up all the, the things we have. Um, these are the most important features from a management point of view. Uh, we, of course, if we go into the placement group view, we can like, show the placement groups that belong to that. We have other things like uh, for stack fraud and so on. Um, one thing I will just do on this just now is I can do the machine so you can see some reboot or whatever. Um, and reboot. That needs an additional warning, I think. Um, and yeah, it will show up, okay, one server is missing, but it's currently like performing a nice shutdown. They explicitly tell the demons to okay, please shut down and so on, and not like, like turn off the power. Um, so we can now see this view here, which um, tells us this many placement groups are right now affected by this running state. Um, we can click to drill down and so on. And the one here sort of tells us all oh, something down. Um, if you go to the coach map, then we oh, it has not taken it. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, that was kind of slow. Usually that's fast up. Um, and you can see now, okay, it's down, but it was apparently already a 30% rewrite for some reason. Um, oh, this one is also a 30% rewrite. Well, this is a development cluster. People said weird things here. 
Um, and well, I what we told that I think it's good because these servers are for the next like five to ten minutes a good. Um, but it should be back up soonish. And it shows here that these states are okay, these services are missing. And we can also, uh, for example, can we do what it's missing? Well, nothing really, I should continue on with the presentation. Um, because once it goes back to recovery, uh, then we like estimate the time remaining for recovery, but I think there's only two terabytes of data on there. So it will be like, like we take at least two minutes to get a good estimate of how long it takes. Otherwise, it ends up like a bit of a we don't know that. Um, and then it shows up like, okay, morning recovery done in 10 minutes or so. But with nothing going on, the cluster is like not really doing anything. So I've shown off the final. Our dashboards are just available on uh, GitHub. And um, we can run virtual machines on there, like a lot of our customers are using VMware with the cluster. And I have uh, a VMware running here a, that is running on that. And if I just I can like uh, start some data copy in here. The VM is running on an erasure code that's set back end that is re exported by NFS, and the NFS is made highly available via VRP with uh, Keeper Live D, and uh, this is also something you just click a button see if you have a these servers in higher availability group, and then it will automatically check the state of some configured server. Uh, or some configured services paid over once that service pays. For example, you also use that for the S3 gateways for your other gateways, because in many cases it's, it's useless to have an extra proxy in front of it and then manage the proxy via Keeper Live. If you can just manage your uh, gateways via Keeper Live and don't balance via DNS. And if one of them pays, uh, one will get two IP addresses, traffic balance is not perfect. But in many cases it's Sufficient and quicker to set up and easier to set up and manage than having an additional HA proxy in front of it. Um, okay, the data copy is not going so fast because the VM the machine is like attached to one gigabit, uh, not even two gigabit links. Let's see if that is already back to healthy, so we missed the recovery to bed. So you can see something in statistics. Um, Okay, I'm expecting a good time right now. That's the, the last 30 minutes. And one view I kind of like is this PG state view. It tells you how many of your placement groups are in a weird dish state that is not active and clean. And that also can sometimes help you to show what is going on or how it is changing what's going on. And here you can see it did some recovery, but it was just over really quick. And here you can see the, the traffic that was going on from our virtual machine. And also, if you got the like this data balance view, um, ideal world right, there would be like one line because all of them have the exact same data. In the real world, it's not like that, but uh, you can use this table to quickly see which one is being wrong. In this case, as we just saw in the question, there was some set down to relate 30% in this question down here. Um, and one more thing before I go back to the presentation. Uh, it's all this concept design, so for resizes, the first thing that happens is that the menu no longer shows by default. And the second thing happens that it like, goes to this tablet state because it now assumes I'm running on a tablet and it just, just changes how all these views look. And you can images that needs you get the image from us. We have some fancy Dockerized list scripts that generate images daily and um, then we test them and see, okay, it's a great image. We tested our discarded version. This uh, version we you know, currently are updating the search and send to us and testing and we are working with Red Hat on our Congress and Enterprise Linux on a live system um, that is coming soonish at the moment to be called and set up the again search which works really well. <coughs> okay, it means we provide a fully featured image. The image comes with everything you need. There's a demon running in there that contacts our backend. It already contacts the backend during boot, so you already see it while it's boot. <laughs> Um, there's already the central performance data collection, central syswork collection. If you log into the, uh, the admin channel you just showed there, all the syswords are available out there via the uh, general control, just normal command has all the syswords of all the servers just because we sent them there, collected in the right format, and make them available to uh, system to general control. 
And the idea is you never have to log in by SSH, because even if you have to do it for a second, you just click in the UI and do whatever you wanted to do, and then you're done. And you just plug in the server, boot it, and call it a day. Um, the line number, number two will be that I just show how to expand a cluster, show the boot process. You run, you run all the time, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, yeah just enter one command. Um, Vagrant app set three and it boots a virtual machine and this is a Vagrant setup. You can get it on our website and that's what was the last thing I wanted to show. Um, go to our website, download it, play, play with it for yourself. And it like starts up here and I have to play with it somewhere. <coughs> uh, but while it's doing that, um, time for questions, I guess. Where do you put where do you put the modern data store? I've seen that get to like 100 gigs with a big rebalance before, which if you're putting it all in RAM is quite painful. Um, no, no, no. That would be crazy to put them on data store RAM. Um, so we are not doing that. If you, I can show it in a second while the server here is booting, it's already selected the tag as a new one. Um, it's like deploying an OSD disk. You go to the disk view of the server, I can just show it as a single version free disk. Um, yes, I have a free disk. And this is not meant to be used for um, things that one gigabit that you can't use, can't be used this one, uh, can't use that one. Um, but you go to the disk view, you go to the, uh, and tell it, okay, use this as one disk, and then it will uh, detect this as one disk and reboot, uh, redeploy all the, the one service that tells you use that disk. Like I can show it here. Um, just out of curiosity, um, after you said that the Grafana Dash are publicly available on GitHub across through your repo, and I wasn't able to find the correct code, do I miss something or where is it? Yeah, not yet open source, sorry. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so so um, we want to, we are planning a community edition if it can't be closed source, sorry. Um, we want to do open source. It's the, the current problem is that our code is we want to keep some features enterprise only. Um, that would be mainly the drawing HA groups, but all the everything snapshots, based statistics, and so on, you can get that for free. But the code is too entangled, we couldn't get that out yet. We originally planned it for last summer, and then we had other problems. We had too many customers asking us to implement different stuff than open sourcing. We, we, I personally am a big investor in open source. I've done so many open source projects. If you don't find it up there, hundreds of thousands of lines of open source code, and I want to put it open source sooner than later, but. Okay, yeah. thank you. I know one last question. Here's the second one. I just deployed it and I can kind of like click here and just deploy it and see what it expects. Okay, thank you. Thank you.